fentanyl. You know that's my thing. My support and love and appreciation for the men and women, our veterans in our military, our active duty men and women, all of their families, those that dedicate their lives to public service, whether it's in law enforcement at a city level or a county level in a, sh in a sheriff's office. But also, I will die on the hill of trying to make sure that everyone knows the dangers of fentanyl. And guess who couldn't care less if your child, your neighbor, your co-worker died of fentanyl today? And that would be members of the cartel. Right across, literally it's just so bizarre, right across an interstate. You go, this is the United States in El Paso. In fact, we were standing on the campus of the University of Texas at El Paso or UTEP today. You look across six, seven lanes of traffic, and you look across to one of the deadliest cities anywhere on planet Earth. I'm not even going to bore you right now with the details, and I know every single number represents a life. But it's just amazing. Did you know that the deadliest, most dangerous city for women in the entire country of Mexico is right here six lanes across the highway or the interstate? It is my pleasure to welcome once again our friend of the program. He, His bio I could read until 530. But you have seen him on Fox, and you've seen him all over television on Newsmax and OAN. He is or was the special agent in charge of the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, and he was in that special ops division. Uh, he was there for almost a decade. His name is Derek Maltz, and Derek, Stefan Subs in El Paso, welcome back to the program, and thank you so much on this special week of broadcast from our nation's border. Stefan, thanks for having me back, and I'm glad to hear you down at the border. Why don't you get some of these politicians and uh, Washington swamp rats to come down and join you? Brother. If we only could. I, forget the Washington Swamp Rats. I can't get anybody out of downtown Denver or the state of, of Colorado. And, and and no offense, I'm going to put on my Republican friends on, on, on notice, too. I didn't hear any of y'all calling me on my t cell phone saying, how come you didn't invite me? I haven't heard one one peep from a Republican, Derek. So that, I don't know, that to me says a lot. Listen, I've got a, two two things I want to start off with. Number one, tomorrow at this time, so 24 hours from now, we have a man that you know very well, and he wants me to say hello to you and pass along greetings, and that is uh, the for one of the former top dogs at the DEA, Jack Riley. Jack Riley will join us tomorrow at 5.05. He wants me to say hello to you. He says he's great, you're, you're great, and, he, and I, I think he said he's the man. So there you go for that. So I will make sure to uh, you know let you know. And, and then secondly, I don't know if it's on your calendar, but I want to start with this. Since I'm kind of looking at the opioids and, and the fentanyl and, and, and the drugs and the cocaine and the marijuana that are so controlled, obviously, by the cartels and so, so just, you know, voraciously uh, ingested by Americans every single day. Tomorrow is the ninth anniversary of something that you have just a little bit of info on and intel on, and that is... Nine years ago tomorrow was the capture of one Joaquin El Chapo Guzman in Mazatlan, Mexico. I don't know if that's on your calendar, but nine years ago tomorrow. Yes, I'm very familiar with that, Stefan. I was down in Mexico in January of 2014 working with the embassy team and all the interagency partners coming up with the plan to provide intelligence to the team down there on the ground with the CMAR unit, the Mexican Marines, to go capture them the first time. So I'm very familiar with that, and I'm also familiar, even though I was retired, with the second capture that was done by these amazing patriots that worked with the Mexican Marines. You know, he's in Supermax as we speak, and that is in Florence, Colorado, just you know a few hours away from downtown Denver to the south. I'm wondering... Can you give us, I don't mean to, to have you give us a bio, and I don't. I couldn't care less, you know, when El Chapo w w celebrates his birthday, but, but who is this guy? And I wonder if he has any impact on things even today from Supermax. Well, Chapo was, of course, the leader for many years of the Sinaloa cartel, which in my view is the most powerful cartel maybe in history uh, as far as their worldwide presence and the amount of deadly drugs and now fentanyl that they're pumping into America. And he made, you know, billions of dollars and, you know, was involved with violence around the world. But, you know, it's interesting, Stefan, because, you know, today uh, there was a very high ranking uh, member of the Mexican government convicted, probably or actually the highest ranking ever tried and convicted in America, Gar Garcia Luna, Anero Garcia wow. Luna. He was the FBI equivalent 
of, uh, you know, in Mexico, the public security director. And it was nice to see the victory today, but, you know, it just shows you the level of systemic corruption in Mexico. And Chapo was the master at, you know, finding individuals uh, to, you know, to pay off, to bribe, and use them to help, uh, you know, the cartels get their drugs into America and, you know, tip them off on all these capture operations. So it was very, uh, very good to see the prosecutors and law enforcement get a victory today in court in New York. Our guest is our friend of the program, Derek Maltz. He uh, was uh, the special agent in charge of the SAC of the Special Operations Division, uh, or SOD. I'm not going to get into all the acronyms, but he was with the, and dedicated his life before retirement to the Drug Enforcement Administration and serving folks like you and me that didn't even know a Derek Maltz existed. Seriously. He focused on El Chapo. He's been featured on Fox News and Newsmax and 60 Minutes and CNN. And I wonder, you know, you could go off and never take another radio call like this again, Derek. Why do you do it? And why is it so important when you could be, you know, clearly just step away from it all? It's real simple. I, I speak and I support the families around America that are losing their kids at historic levels. And I support nonprofits around the country, try to get them awareness, try to get them exposure, because our government right now has pretty much ignored this crisis until the politics popped up and they had no choice. I mean, law enforcement like the DEA and Homeland Security, FBI, ATF, Marshals, they're out there every day putting their life on the line, Border Patrol, CBP, doing phenomenal work. But they don't get the support from the leaders in Washington. So it pisses me off. And I see these cartels operating with impunity, working with the Chinese criminal networks to destabilize and destroy America. So when the kids are dying as young as 13 years old, our military is dying in different aspects of the military uh, at record levels. It's really something that all Americans should be paying attention because this is really shouldn't be a political issue. It's not like I say, it's not a red or a white a red or a blue issue, it's a red, white, and blue issue. It's killing American kids at historic levels. One thing I always say, Stefan, which drives me crazy, there's never been in the history of this country any terrorist organization, not al-Qaeda, not ISIS, not Hezbollah, that has killed this many Americans. But yet we can't even get the government to educate the kids in school about this deadly poison that's coming in from these filthy labs that the cartels control in Mexico. It's really something that you can't even believe when you think about it. And so that's why I'm doing it, because I believe, like Ronald Reagan said, if you can't get them to see the light, make them feel the heat. So you want to be the DHS secretary, you want to be the FBI director, you want to be the attorney general, you want to be all these officials in Washington with the bodyguards and the details, you have to take the responsibility of the death and destruction of America. Derek Maltz is our guest. Uh, he is one of a kind. He is a friend of the program. And as we are live from El Paso and he joins us uh, this evening, obviously via telephone, I'm telling you, we do this again. I, I might have to get you out of retirement and you come down here to a place like El Paso or we go to some other uh, you know, some other area that's seeing this stuff because this is happening. Derek, I mean, we're going to be out of here. I, I fly home Friday morning. I'm going to be back in the studio on Friday afternoon's program. I realize we're not going to, we're not going to change national policy down here. I'm not going to, I'm lucky if I get a, a, a Republican politician in Colorado to listen to us. But you know what? Again, uh, I, I think we all have that are, we're all down here. We've got this bulldog tenacity and we've got to do it. We have the ability you have through your impeccable resume and career. You have the ability and had the ability to you know, make a difference and make change. The least we can do, I think, with a power of, of at least speaking to a few people uh, through a microphone is to at least make them, make them aware. There is something that I want to go back to. Your first visit with us not too many weeks ago, I want to, I probably quoted this wrong or incorrectly probably 15 times, and I'm like, the next time we get Derek Maltz on, I want to clarify because I didn't take very good notes. But I want to take you back to part of our conversation 
the first time you were on with us earlier this year. And I think I had just said that um, we had had the uh, special agent in charge of the Rocky Mountain Division of the DEA, Brian Besser, fantastic, terrific human. And he was on with me because they had sent out a press release telling all of us in the Colorado media that the Rocky Mountain Division of the DEA had seized 5.8 million fentanyl pills off the streets of Colorado in 2022. Enough fentanyl to almost kill every Coloradan uh, living there today. And then when you were on, you were like, here's what I took from it. And here's why I want clarification. You had said something about there was like a drug house, and I can't remember if it was in Arizona, but you said they were either producing 7 or 70 million pills a month. And that is a huge disparity. So can you clarify that? Yeah, yeah. So basically what happened was there was a lab allegedly hit in Mexico, not Arizona, okay, where the okay. Mexican army hit a fentanyl lab, a stash location, and the AP reported, I think it was October of, I think, 21. I can't even keep okay. track anymore. Sure, sure, They sure. reported that this particular lab was producing 70 million fake pills per month. That is unconfirmed, so, but that was reported by the AP. When I contacted DEA in Mexico, they could not confirm that seizure. Because, of course, one of the things, Stefan, you have to realize is that the Mexican cartels put out deceptive press reports because they want the American public to think and believe they are actively going after the cartels. So it's very hard to believe. But the AP is a credible news organization. Not Mm. sure where they got the 70 million figure. But let's talk about facts right now. The DEA administrator just testified last week that DEA working with their partners sees 57 million fake pills over 13,000 pounds of fentanyl last year, totaling 410 million deadly dosage units. So that's the facts. That's what we know. If you look at Border Patrol and the seizures that are made by CBP just in the Dallas, they are seizing fentanyl. Like, I'll give you a rundown real quick. Yeah. February 9th, 30,000 pills. February 10th, 433,000 pills. February 10th, another 421,000 pills. February 12th, 108,000 pills. February 14th, Valentine's Day, 195,000 pills. 270,000 pills February 18th. The FBI gang unit in Cleveland, 88 pounds of fentanyl seized. So I track this every day throughout America, and the seizures are are off the charts because the men and women of law enforcement want to protect Americans, and they're out there fighting, okay, whereas the politicians are shooting off their mouth, and they're not backing the law enforcement and they're not backing the families that are losing their kids. Look at this uh, drug czar, what he said last week. Pay attention to these words. Quote, worst drug crisis we have ever seen, unacceptable to me and the president, direct threat to public health and national security. It's a new era of drug trafficking. And we went to the Chinese, he said, to recruit them to join us, and they chose not to engage. So now, and we had the DEA administrator saying how Mexico could do more. They could do more. Social media companies could do more. Where the hell is the action, Stefan? When are we going to get pissed off and start demanding action from, from these, these, these uh, politicians Preach. that we elect? Yes. And you know what they say, right? And I forgot the exact quote, but Thomas Jefferson said, the government you, you know, elect is the government. It's the government you deserve. Like yeah. No, yeah. yeah you the deserve, government right? you elect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm telling you, I'm pissed. The families out there. When they voted this direction, this is what they get. But you know what? I don't want to be political because there's enough blame to go around for years. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget something. Stefan, don't ever forget this. You can take notes on this one. I lived this nightmare when the fentanyl bombing started in this country around 2012 from China when Barack Obama and Joe Biden were the team in power. So let's, let's not say, you know, Trump did this, Trump did that. Yeah, Trump inherited a mess, and you know, so it's been ongoing for years, and it's been escalating. But what we need to do is stop blaming each other and save the lives of the kids. Sir, are you by chance available for one more segment with us? I'd love to continue. We just yeah. have to get a quick timeout. Let's put uh, Leroy. Let's yeah. put uh, Derek Maltz on hold. There, there, there is no finer guest. I mean, we've got great guests. Trust me, I love our border consultant John like a brother. But there's no finer guest. 
than Derek Malls. When we come back, I want to ask him, and again, tomorrow we're going to have, at least for a time, he was the second in command under the administrator at the Drug Enforcement uh, Administration. His name is Jack Riley. And it was his job. This guy, I, I got to tell you, with all the respect in the world, Jack Riley was obsessed with El Chapo. Obsessed. To the point where, I mean, I'm reading his book and I'm going, dude, this may be a little unhealthy, but I certainly am not going to throw any rocks at you. But Jack Riley in his book, Drug Warrior, and again, he's tomorrow at this time. Jack Riley writes that drugs, illegal and illicit drugs, opioids and fentanyl, are a bigger threat to the United States of America, read you and me, than terrorism as we know it. I want to see if Derek Maltz concurs with that. Let's take traffic and weather right now. Staff and subs with you live from El Paso. Derek Maltz, do not miss our second segment with him. That comes up next on 710 KNUS. And we continue our conversation with truly an, an American patriot. Derek Maltz, special agent in charge of the... Uh, uh, under the U.S. Uh, Department of Justice, the Special Operations Division with the Drug Enforcement Administration. And I feel sorry for you if you're just clicking on because, uh, Mr. Maltz, uh, just slightly, how would they say that, in fuego, and I love it because it is about time that people like us that don't have the intel of, of our guest, when they tell us to wake up and we better wake up, you know what, I think that's a pretty good indication that, guess what, we should wake up. And the amount of, of drug, you know, uh, and Derek, thank you so much again. You're such a friend of the program, and I honor your sacrifice in, in your public service to our country. You know, you, you mentioned uh, a date that stuck out uh, was, what, uh, three days ago, um, February 18th. That was my birthday. So as I am celebrating uh, on a very mellow, low-key level my birthday this past weekend, you were saying that on February 18th, X amount of pounds of, of, of fentanyl was, was seized. And as you well know, because you said you track it every day, it just it, it's a, it's a never ending deal, isn't it? And I have a feeling you'd agree that this potentially at least can only get worse. Right. So I can sit here all night telling you the seizures that have happened over the period of time, whether at the border or inside America from the law enforcement agencies. But, you know, there's been several, uh, you know, one million plus pill seizures. Right. Just give you a real simple understanding in Phoenix, Arizona, the DEA started tracking these kind of pill seizures, the fake pills. 2015, they seized zero Mexican fake pills. Last year, over 25 million. So you can see in a, in a short period of time, the Sinaloa cartel using the Gallus, using Arizona as a main entry point, are saturating the country with the pills. Now, I can tell you that I testified four years ago over four years ago, in Ohio court, uh, I'm sorry, Ohio Congress, state Congress, uh, mm -hmm. you know, both the, the Senate and the House, and I testified with Sarah Carter from Fox News and also a mother who lost a daughter, Heidi Riggs, and we were testifying to declare the cartels as terrorists. And we were pushing really hard along with several other people, Chip Roy, congressman from Texas, and Jason Jones, who's a dedicated public servant as well from Texas. And, you know, President Trump wanted to do it, you know, four or five years ago. But unfortunately, the bureaucrats and all those State Department officials in Washington convinced them not to do it. It was too aggressive. You look at now all the deaths and all these mass poisonings that we have in America. Let's just put it this way. I have never heard of or never have seen in my life chemical weapons being brought into this country and killing Americans all throughout the country, not just one at a time, but sometimes like, you know, just to give you an example, Kings County, Washington State, the medical examiner came out in January and said the first 21 days, he had 35 dead. He doesn't have enough cooler space in the morgue, right? Christmas Day, San Francisco, six poison to the hospital. In Onondaga County, upstate New York, they had 14 poisonings in 36 hours in December, and then in January, they had like 25 poisonings in 24 hours. So we're seeing this throughout the country. I track mass poisonings as well. The mm -hmm. DEA administrator last April put out a warning to America that we were seeing mass poisonings all over America, and that started when we saw nine dead in Washington, D.C., in one area around the same time in January. 
Then in April, there were 10 days, last April. So, you know, it's just obvious if you pay attention to this daily that it's getting worse, it's escalating, cartels operate with impunity, and our government is lacking the action. And that's what we need right now, action. That's why I'm a big proponent of declaring the cartels terrorists and ripping them apart like we'd rip apart ISIS or Hezbollah or any terrorist organization because they're killing our kids like we've never seen before. Derek Maltz is our guest. We'll have him on again. Uh, he is a friend of the program and, and certainly a dedicated and passionate American and patriot and public servant. You know, last time we had Derek on a few weeks ago, uh, we both talked about our mutual friend who has been on the program, sat in studio with me back in Denver. Her name from the western slope of Colorado, her name, Andrea Thomas, who lost her, I believe, 32-year-old daughter. And Andrea feeling, and Derek, you know this, feeling really that you can't look to anyone in an elected position. Doesn't matter. Independent, Republican, Democrat. For people like Andrea Thomas and the th- tens of thousands of parents like her that still mourn the loss of their children every single day at the hands that they lost their kids because of fentanyl and the poisoning. It's not an overdose. It's a, it's a murder. Uh, you know, you know Andrea's story. She started the website, and I want to give, I just want to give this out for you listening, friends. Voicesforawareness.com. Voicesforawareness.com. If you can't remember it, send me a text or send me an email. Voicesforawareness.com. But, Derek, I mean, it, it to me is, it is the times in which we live, but, I mean, look, we, we have so much proof already that if the Andrea Thomases of the world, if you and me and our listeners, if we don't kind of take it into our own hands and make a big stink about it, the politicians sure aren't. Well, first of all, we have a growing army of families like uh, Ms. Thomas uh, across the country. I work with Lost Voices of Fentanyl, which has about 24,000 followers on Facebook. Another really one more good t- group uh, One more follow. time. One, yeah, one more Lost time on the, on the group. Of, uh, Lost Voices of Fentanyl. Okay. It's a really good Facebook group to follow. And there's other uh, organizations like Song for Charlie out in California, which is awesome. And they provide really good education material. But you know what's really sad, Stefan, is that it's the parents right now that are dedicated to education yep. of our schools and our, yep. and our community. The father, Jim Rao, who's the, he's the founder of Families Against Fentanyl, He's the guy that's doing all the research with his analysts that are putting out all these stats. Like, for example, the most recent stats, fentanyl deaths of children under 14 are exploding. Infant fentanyl deaths increased twice as fast between 19 and 21. Fentanyl deaths among toddlers between the ages of 1 and 4 more than tripled. And deaths among children between 5 and 14 have quadrupled. So they're going after our kids. Fentanyl's being left in homes, and kids are getting in contact with it. We have the pills being ordered on social media at unprecedented rates. And social media companies are, you know, helping facilitate the distribution of this poison. And, they get, and they're, not, they're not getting held accountable. It's a joke. You look yeah. like, for example, San Diego put out not too long ago, they've seen a 2,375% increase in fentanyl-related deaths from 2016 to 2021. I mean, it's just like I could go on all day, but yet I'm sick and tired of talking about it. I wish we had some damn action. Derek Maltz is his name. Uh, I think for 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 time constraints, uh, he was a, a bigwig at the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, and and I just the respect that I have for men and women like Derek who, again, he could be on a golf course or just he could be at a lounge right now sipping a cocktail. Instead, this is what he's doing in his retirement after a very dedicated and uh, decorated, I should say, career. I just want to go back, and I know the answer because you've said this for the last five minutes, but I did I did want to make the point that uh, your former colleague at, at DEA, Jack Riley, the author of Drug Warrior, he'll be on with us at 5.05 tomorrow evening. You know, he writes in his book that, hey, drugs are bigger and a bigger threat to Americans today. Drugs are a bigger threat to Americans than terrorism. I know you have echoed those comments. And that it, would you really let that sink in, Derek? That, that's amazing. Well, I would just redefine it. Drugs slash poisonous chemical substances from yep. the cartels is a bigger threat. 
The problem is, you see, the cartels, they evolved from being drug cartels to transnational criminals to now the biggest narco-terrorist organization in the world. And they're right on our border. They're building up armies. They have weapons that better than a lot of, like, small countries probably have in their military. They have drones with ex- they drop in explosives on their adversaries. They have all these military-grade weapons. They're killing at record levels. They drop people in acid. They chop people up. They dismember bodies left and right. They post heads on fence posts. They do whatever they got to do to intimidate and to dominate. And now they run the country of Colombia because this current president in Mexico, President AMLO, has the old hugs for thugs, no bullets policy. Now, I shouldn't be too critical of that president because we have that in America too. <laughs> That's why uh, listen. our country is 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 got crime yeah. infested neighborhoods everywhere. We're yeah. letting these people out of jail. They don't go to jail. There's no deterrence anymore. So, you know, I can't be too critical of AMLO, but you know what I would say, Stefan, that if you can't take them down on the criminal side, now it's time to declare them terrorists and wipe them out, decimate them with the patriots that work in our military and our Please. intel community yes. with the yes, capabilities sir. we have. Uh, real quick, we've got about three and a half minutes left. I want to give you rapid fire, so I will ask you live. Try to keep your answers uh, short, but I want to get in some rapid fire questions to you. Uh, in Juarez, which is right across uh, the interstate from where we are, almost literally right now, where I mean, I, I, I could be in Juarez, uh, Chihuahua, Mexico, in probably less than six minutes uh, by car, and that's driving at very much uh, conservative speed. From 2005 to 2006, there were 10,000 murders in Juarez. Have you ever been there? I have not been to Juarez. Of course, I've been to El Paso. Sure. Stay at it. We stayed at a Juarez. Uh, what? 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 What do you think? If you can, by the way, my border consultant right now is saying, "Yeah, see, I told you, stay out of Juarez." Uh, right now, what do you think it's like here that I don't know, or our listeners wouldn't know that any of us from from our radio station, all around us in El Paso, uh, is it as bad as ever? And I'm talking about with the fentanyl and the illegal drugs and the organized crime, the cartels. In my view, it's like a war zone. So stay the hell out of it. I love that. I hate that, but I love that. Uh, in your distinguished and long career, with your own personal eyes, what's the most amount of illegal drugs you have ever seen in person and do you know a value? Wow, that's a, that's a tough question because I've been around some really good law enforcement <laughs> people and ran the largest task force in America. But, you know, we've seen tons of cocaine. We've seen, you know, thousands of pounds of meth. But the pills, I mean... Like I, when I was working, we I didn't get to see the massive amounts of pills other than the photos. But I would say the heroin, you know, I used to see a lot of in my groups. I see a lot of white heroin coming in from Colombia, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of heroin. This is before we started seeing the synthetic opioids come into the country. Let me ask you about where we are in El Paso right now. Would it surprise you, and you don't have to give me any intel, you know, stuff, uh, obviously secrets need to stay secret, but we were just talking off the air about tunnels. Do you think right now there are tunnels, and I don't know if you could take a guess Absolutely. as to how many? I won't, I won't even take a guess because I, I'll tell you that, obviously, the tunnels and the engineering for tunnels has been going on many years. Uh, Chapo Guzman and Sinaloa Cartel, were the masterminds, and they were absolutely involved for many years. So, yeah, there's tunnels all over that area. There's tunnels, into obviously, into Southern California. They have that tunnel task force that's been seizing tunnels for the past several years. You know, Homeland Security, Department of Justice, DEA, FBI, they're all working together. So, yeah, there's tunnels all over the place. Crazy. Final question for our impeccable guest, Derek Maltz, former special uh, agent in charge of the Special Operations Division with the Drug Enforcement Administration. Again, and I know I asked you this the last visit, and I look forward to many more. Your advice to a parent right now, not necessarily thinking, ah, this will never happen. My family's impervious. But what is your message? And you know what? Honestly, maybe I should stop saying what's your message to parents because every single one of us in America should be concerned. If you have a heartbeat and a conscience and you care, what is your message as you leave us on this Tuesday evening? 
So I would say immediately watch Dead on Arrival, 20-minute documentary, which features like four or five parents who have lost their kids, real story. It's very short to the point and very um, impactful. Then I would go to DEA.gov website, the One Pill Can Kill, tremendous amounts of educational material. I would visit Song for Charlie, so I'd get educated and sit down and talk to your kids and make sure you know what the hell they're doing on these, on these phones. They're not innocently talking to friends. I just had a guy on Fox News yesterday that I helped from Mississippi. His 16-year-old kid committed suicide after he got extorted from a Nigerian crime ring in Nigeria on a sextortion sting. And the kid committed suicide in his house. The father wanted to tell a story. But why do I bring that up? Because the common denominator is Instagram and social media is facilitating these predators to go after your kids. So you have to know what they're doing on the phones. Derek, uh, again, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'll talk to you offline, but but thank you. And I'm telling you, we're not going to stop the fight from a tiny radio station in Denver. I know you won't stop the fight from, from your pulpit, and uh, I just look forward to our next visit. Thank you, sir, so much. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Derek Maltz.